Hello and welcome to a tabletop bellhop uh, box building um, a video. Um, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Um, what I'm hoping to do for you tonight is let you know how exactly what, what, what this is and how easy it is to build and verify this claim at the top that says you need to build. So what this is is this is the orbital box times two from the German escape room company, Escape Welt, who during COVID shifted their business to instead of having in-person escape rooms to building what they called escape room boxes. And really what these are is wooden puzzle boxes that, that are make awesome gift boxes. They're fun to solve. They're, they're neat knickknacks to have in your room. Um, if you check out my channel, um, I'll probably throw some links in the show notes to do some of the other boxes from them that I have already reviewed and solved. Now, what I am extremely curious about, I, I will say first off, thanks, Escape Welt. This is a review copy they sent us, so thank you, Escape Welt, for that. Um, what I am absolutely fascinated by, so it says times two, and the whole thing is there's two puzzles in one here. You are going to build the box and then try to solve it, and I am really, really curious to find out how I'm not going to spoil the puzzle while building this. Like, that fascinates me. If, if I'm going to be able to put this together today, and not know the answer and how to get the box open. So, so that, that's one of my other goals. Uh, again, the other thing is to claim it does say easy to build. I want to see how easy it is to build. Um, I did do an unboxing of this, which you're welcome to go watch. I'll probably throw up a link up here to that if you do want to check it out. But I'm about to open it here too. So you're going to see that both ways. So that seems kind of silly. So join me as I attempt to build the Orbital Box Times 2 from Escape Welt. Um, and I may as well throw it out here now. I'll probably mention a couple times. If you do go to Escape Welt's website, if you just search Escape Welt, you'll find them E S C A P E W E L T, or they're also E S C Welt, which you can kind of see down in this corner over there. Um, that'll also get them. There's a QR code. I, I can hold that up. I don't know if you'll be able to scan that or not. There's also a QR code here, but if you go there and use code Bellhop, B E L L H O P, you'll get 10% off, which is kind of cool. They gave us an exclusive code. We're going to move on to actually building this, and I'm going to swip, swap my main camera down for the majority of this. All right, so here we have the, the box for the Orbital Box Times 2 from Escape Welt. Again, I've already done an unboxing, so this may not be the order everything was in, but what we have is a number of laser-cut birch wood that you're supposed to be able to get out without any tools required. Though on one of these, I'll be looking for it, there is a tool to help you push these out. What I thought was interesting is a whole bunch of pieces have already been like pre-cut through. And these are all single-sided, like the, the, the pattern's only on one side. It looks like a nice complicated box. There's the tool. So we have this, and this is the tool they give you that just says escapewelt.com on it. So again, here's that web address for anyone who's interested. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is get that out. These scare me. I don't know. You see what that says? That says spare parts. The fact this box comes with spare parts scares the heck out of me. Makes me worry I'm going to break something. So along with this, I also get a player's passport. They put this in all of their products. It kind of just introduces you to all their things. And it's kind of cute because they got this like character that tells a little story. Shows what countries they ship to. There's all the various things, and then they have descriptions and QR codes, but they also like threw in a habit tracker. And if I remember, there's like a puzzle a little later. That's the space box. That was hard. Check out my review of the space box. That was hard. And then there's like a maze. So there's like this little activity booklet that comes with it, as well as a, a five pound off gift card in the back. We don't need that right now. What we do need is this. And then also in here is what looks like a pulley, perhaps, perhaps some string. And this is sandpaper. So we're going to get rid of the box because we're going to have a box at the end of this. I don't need this cardboard one. So I did give a quick look at this before we started just to find out. It is in multiple languages. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 languages. So the English part that I care about right is right here. And it does tell you what you're going to need, which is you may want a hobby knife to be able to get the pieces out that might be stuck. And they do warn you, you are going to want wax. Supposedly the wax is to grease some of the parts that are going to have to move. Now, moving on, like I said, I've already looked at this. It does talk about the spare parts. So these are the symbols we're going to have to watch for. 
So the first one up here, when we see this, we need to wax the part. When we see this, we just have to be really careful. Like make sure you're putting the piece on right. When we see this, they ask you to sand the part. And then this final one is make sure the parts are moving easily. And then there's a thing telling you about the piece to help you get parts out. So step one is gonna be to get that piece out, which I'm gonna try to do it without using anything but my fingers. And no, that's, oh, 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 I heard a pop. There it goes. Oh, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. So this is the tool I'm supposed to use to poke things out. And if I have difficulty, I have this. Spare parts, we're gonna put it up top, just off camera there. And we're gonna go step one. So step one here, I don't know how much of this will be able to keep into the camera. Um, so number one, so these are numbered. I should probably put them in order somehow. Okay, so the other thing I see they're doing, so number one, oh, they have them this way. Okay, so they have the one in the bottom. I need this bot, this top piece here. And supposedly some of these are labeled. Okay, so some of them, like this says 25, this says six. I don't know if you can see that. So we're gonna just try to. Oh, number one's in the middle there, I found it. See, there's actually like an arrow that says number one. Just to make sure I'm taking out the right part. Okay, that came off. No problem, no exacto needed, so bonus. And then for number two, this is on sheet two, I need two and three. Sorry, my eyes probably aren't good for this. Oh no, one, two, and four. Where is part four? Oh, here's two. Okay, that's two. That also popped off pretty well. And then on number four, hopefully I can find number, th no, that says four and five. And I want number four. Sorry again, that my eyes aren't quite great for this. So then number four. So we're going to here, number four. No, this is, the, uh, honestly, coming apart way better than I thought it would. So far, so good. So here we go, step number one. It's this side up. And this side up. So these two together like that. And this in, now what I need to see is which way. Oh, no glue required for this. So I'm also kind of interested to see how that works out. Let's see, which side up? So the letters on here are upside down. So like the Y's, these ha this has letters on it. So going in this way. So like this, huh. I wonder if there's going to be a, a trick to holding this together. Okay, so that is step one. There we go. We get, kind of get a rough idea how big the box is going to be. Now step two is over here. We are going to add three and five and six. Three, five, and six. Here's three. Three is the opposite edge here. All right, so far so good. Three and five. Here we get to like trickier bits. Again, no glue used whatsoever here. Kind of feel like I should tape this or something at this point. So yes, here we have the start of our puzzle box. Okay, and then six somehow lays on top. Six looks like it's on sheet five. Yep, six is here. Oh, I think I would have had to do this in a different order. Okay, so I am gonna have to take off a couple of these walls to get this on first. Oh. There we go, everything falling. Crumbling, crumbling. <laughs> Easier said than done. All right, here's where things finally got a little interesting. Lining this up is proving to not be easy. There we go.
don't want to press too hard and break anything. Having a real hard time on this corner right here. Come on. There it goes. All right. So interesting, we already have a bit that moves here. Okay. <laughs> we are done step two. Done step two. Now we are on to step three. I need to find eight and seven, and I really don't see where eight goes. So sheet five. So eight is this outside ring. All right, this time I really don't want to break anything, so I am going to grab the hobby knife for a little, a little push here. So this is seven eight. Now, one of the things I got to watch is there's extra stuff on here that I have to assume is extra. But I note this says 34. So we're going to put this piece up here so we don't lose it. And there's another copy of this, but it doesn't say what it is. So I'm going to put that aside. Now, it does tell me to sand this. So we're going to open up. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, this is wax. It comes with the wax. All right, so it asked me to sand this. Oh, I hate that sound. And some form of block or something might have been better. Okay, I am not going to go crazy with the sanding. Okay, so I need this. And then I also need something. This little tiny piece in the middle of six. There it is, number eight. This piece right here is some kind of lock. Again, I don't want to push too hard and break anything, but I also... I wish I could... You know what you can't see on these is where the tabs are. Like where you need to cut. So what I've been doing is just kind of tracing the line and hoping that works. There we go, number eight. So far, nothing's broken. So far, so good on that count. Okay, so this... How can I tell which way is front here? I should try to find a PDF of this. So yes, I have this the proper way around. This is going to go right over top. There we go. That wasn't bad. Right over top. So you can kind of see where we are right now. Now we finally have something to kind of hold this together, which is nice. And then I am somehow going to use eight to lock this. How? Okay. All right. So I didn't quite do that, it seems. Thankfully, this seems to be coming off pretty easily. Okay. What I need to do is I need to put this in first. Huh, I don't want to mess this up. All right. Which way does it go? No, nope, not like this. Okay, like this. So it has to go on like that, with that tab at the top. And this has a check mark, which means like, be careful. Yes, and it's pointed that way. Okay, so now we're going to try this again. But we got to hold that piece in place. No, nope, I'm caught on that corner. Did I turn it? No, I'm still going the right way. This slid on so nice the first time. There we go. So, so here we have this neat little bit that, you know, does something eventually. All right, we are done. Check mark. First one. Shows all the different pieces and where they go. We, we have completed the first check mark. I, I am done steps one through three. So now we're going to move on to step four, which says turn it 180. Again, some neat stuff going on. All right, I can, I can kind of see. Hey, look, there's letters. So I, I, I suggest if you just want to solve this, not to watch me because it'll probably spoil some of it. Um, so a whole bunch of sanding going on, and then there's a exclamation mark, which is a be very careful you put something in the right way. All right, so I need nine, nine, and ten. 
So sheet number one should have nine and nine. Yep, right here. And I think this case, I'm going to use the pokey piece because it's this here. So this was a tool they gave us earlier in case you missed it. Kind of push these out. Yep, there it goes. I am extremely impressed by how easy these pieces have come out. I am, I'm so worried about breaking something and so far no problems with that at all. So I do find it a little difficult sometimes to find out where you need to apply pressure. There we go. So nine and nine. Let's do nine and nine on their own. The nines are going on the edges. So this is going to lock more stuff in place, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a tight fit. Nine. And nine. Now I'm feeling a little more confident handling this that it's not just going to fall apart on me. Nine and nine. Then we need ten. Ten is on sheet six. All right, right here, ten. I love how well labeled this is. I was a little concerned. Plus, being language independent is a big bonus. All right, ten. Now, here's where it says to be careful. Not on the side with the notch. Okay, so not on this side. We need to put on 10. So we're on the opposite side. And I'm just trying to snap that in there. Okay, that took a little pressure. Sorry, I'm off camera here. There we go. You can hear that snap in. This is never coming apart again. I can tell by doing that. I'm like, nope, that's done. That's not going to happen again. Okay, then... I'm supposed to sand all the edges of these, but I'm going to do it when I'm done. I need two 11s. 11s are on sheet 5. I'll make sure I keep things in order over here. So these are all the 11s. There's a whole bunch of them. So we need two of those. Again, slightly concerned about breaking these. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That one was even easier. Nice. Okay, then these. Oh, yeah, I also have to make sure there's multiple holes here. I put them in the right one. So, double check. Okay. Since these are so small, oh, I probably should have. Yeah, I should have. I should have did these before I put them in. So, lesson learned. So yeah, pro tip, sand everything first, not after, which makes sense. So, so far, everything you need is in here, even the wax. Silly me. Okay, so we are back on the front, where I'm calling this front. I don't know. It was the way it had facing forward to snap these in. Oh, that made a horrible sound, but it worked. I really didn't like that sound. Oh. Alrighty. We have a now much more solid box. That no way it's going to come apart. All right. We are done. Step two. This is, this is how our uh, escape welt. Uh, for anyone who's joining partway through, this is the escape welt orbital box times two. We have just completed step number four. This is a two-part escape room box where step one is to build it and then step two is to solve it. And I'm really interested because I'm already seeing some things. How that building this is not going to spoil the entire puzzle. All right, I'm feeling pretty confident here so far. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, I just you can kind of see why I'm a little intimidated here. There's some funky stuff going on over here. And so I am, uh, did I jump? Did I jump? No, four. Okay. So now I'm flipping this over. So now we're, we're looking at, here you can kind of see the inside of the box so far. Um, which of these two sides is this? Okay, so it's this side, because it has just blank here. And then I am grabbing a bunch of pieces and la labeling. Well, everything we need right now is on sheet three, so these. Okay, so here is part 12. Oh, okay. These are all separate pieces. So I got to punch each of these out. Oh, I don't want to hobo that. Yeah, so all of these need be able to be able to move freely. So the next step, does this one come out too? Yes. So I actually have three rings. And what I'm going to need to do is sand all those so that they all spin freely. 
if I wasn't doing this as a review, I would probably grab a Dremel or some better method of sanding. Um, but I want to use what came in the box since that's what you get in the box. So if anyone purchases this, they don't necessarily have to own a Dremel or sandpaper, have sandpaper in the house. All right, the next step is to wax this. So what I am doing is rubbing a piece of wax on this to um, lubricate, I guess would be the right word, but to reduce friction between these pieces. Okay, so now I'm supposed to test um, how well everything spins. Yeah, okay, that fairly smooth. Okay, what I think I need is the inside of this too, which I think could use a little sandpaper for where there it is. All right, now let's try it again. Mike. All right, yeah, that seems to spin fairly well. Um, oh, that one spins really well. This one, oh, is rough. Okay, so we need more wax or sandpaper on this middle one. All right. Oh, it's still tight, but it's spinning. Okay, so we have this. Now, what do I do with this? Okay, I am putting this frame over top of it. Put this aside, put this aside. Let's get this frame out. Okay, so this does have 34s inside it and 33s. So again, we're going to pop those off and put them up here with my other kind of leftover piece. All right, those are all going up there. So now we have this neat, funky looking piece. Um, can't tell which side's up, so let's see if I can figure it out. So the U goes in the top corner here, and then the triangles face up. So kind of like this is what we're putting together here. And that somehow, so let's see. This just sits in here, and this goes over top. There we go. So you can kind of see, it's fascinating me how, how these puzzle pieces are going together, honestly. So there we go. And then is there a way to lock this into place? 13 and 12. No, not at this point. Okay, so the next is 14, which is this big piece at the top of number three. This goes on. Uh, if it's this, it'd be this side. What am I missing here? So there's the triangle side. So it would be here. Is it gonna lock with the other one? No. Okay, so that just sits on. Oh, you guys say it did complete that pattern there. So it's a nice confirmation I'm doing something right. Okay, we are done. Step five of the this. Okay, we're we're done. So now we go to seven. Seven. Oh, there they are. Wow. Okay. Look at what we're trying to get out here. These, these little 15s. That's what we're trying to get out. I need three 15s and a 16. And it does say to sand them. Three 15s. Dude, we have our first casualty. You can see the wood split there. Let us hope that 15 is one of our spares. Yes, they are. So there are some spare 15s. Look at these things. They're ridiculous. Little tiny. All right, let's see if I can get a spare 15 out. Oh yeah, no problem. All right, so far so good. They knew it was gonna happen or they wouldn't have given them to you. And then I accidentally kind of punched out some stuff here. So we're just gonna try to put that back into the frame so I don't lose it. it tells me to sand these. Okay, I, I am a bigger dude with big hands. So the other thing I think you might want is that something grips to hold. The one went in good, the other two popped out. And then a 16. Where do I get a 16? All right, there's our 16. 16 snaps into this slot here. Okay, next. We got all these weird slidey things. So 17 is one of them. Got it. 17 goes on that. 20. It's this big wonky shape. 20. goes on this. 23 goes here. It's like I'm making a puzzle here. 19. Oh, 
goes there. Eighteen. If we put it down there. Twenty-one here. And twenty-two goes here. And it's saying this is good. We're done. Obviously some kind of slide puzzle gonna happen here. Oh sorry, I'm more off camera than I should be. Alright, let's see if we got those right. Twenty ones here. Twenty. So this is the piece we had on earlier, like originally. This little pull-out thing. And we've got the world thing here with some sliders. Hopefully there's something that starts holding all this together soon. Okay, this is actually over here. This one won't move, but this will slide. This will slide at some point. So if this slides, and then this slides up, you should be able to slide this over. This up. That over. And then this will go up, which will push something in. That's That's what I'm seeing here. But again, we're not trying to solve the puzzle. We're just building it right now. So let's put everything kind of back where it told me to have everything. All right, done. All right, I am putting a plate over all of this, which hopefully will hold things in place. It is number 24, which is on sheet number one. Nope, nope, not sheet one. That sheet's free. Okay, so this is going to go over all of this stuff. That's it. That's, that's done. We have that on. Which should have matched up to this side somehow. Okay, are we going to get anything to hold all this together? No. Oi. Okay. Keep being worried something's going to fall off. So now we're moving to this side. Or this side. But I don't want to tip it up because I'm worried something's going to fall off the back. Here, we need 325s and a 27. The 325s are on number one. All right, 325s. Those are going in these holes. It does want me to sand these, so. Okay, those go in pretty solid. See, this front falling down worries me. Those things are like just stacked there. Okay. And then, number 27 is on sheet number six. Oh, I didn't put my sheets back, sorry. Sheet six with this X here. So this goes nested right there. And then I need 22, which popped out on me earlier. That's this funky piece sliding over top of everything here. There we go. We're done that step. 29 and 29. More pieces kind of falling off over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sheet number one up top here because so much stuff is falling off that all right here's these funky 29s i need these here weird shapes then these not into the edges here somehow okay hold on it does say to sand yeah let's sand them Oh, that's a nice tight fit. Okay. All our various sides here. Okay. One of the things that happened while I was doing that is this shifted, so I'm just sliding that back. I could see it because it kind of fell forward. Okay, now we need the other big ring, which is here. And we're finally going to put all this together. Let's figure out the proper way to put this on. Triangle side is here. The gap is there. So here we go. This should hold. Oh, wow. That, Choo! right on. Awesome. Now I am no longer, oh, no. Okay, not quite. See? I'm like, that was way too easy. There we go. There. Now I feel much more confident that everything's going to be held together and not just fall apart on me while I'm doing this. Man, look at that. It just looks fascinating. What's going on in there? Confidence boost. Feeling a little better now. Oh, we're going to we're gonna latch this on just like we did the other side. So 28, 11, 11. All on number six. Here's 28. 
28 goes on what side? 28 is on the side with the triangle. And this is gonna lock everything in place. And again, nothing will ever come apart again once I do this. And I forgot to sand. I did this on the other side too. These go on the ends. Okay, so right in here. And in here. Done. Then we need 33. That's these. Oh, there's one more 11. I missed an 11. There's an 11 right there. I missed that one. I was wondering because I saw them here. Sanding. Like, like that? I think. I think. That's hard to see. Okay, I think that's all that's happening right now, is these are just kind of slotting on. I don't know what they're going to do eventually. Eventually, I, th I think these this curve's going to be here. Okay, this looks overly complicated. <sighs> look at this. Look what I have to do next. That, that, that doesn't look like fun. I'm making hinges, I think. So 34 times 2. Then, 31 times 3. Yeah, this is kind of deconstructing as I try to get the pieces off. Which is fine, it's not breaking in a bad way. But, okay, three of those. Then, 32, and then 35. So I have this. Okay, that's slid on fairly nice. Then three of these. That one had a bit of a burr on it. Then two of these. Okay. All right. There you go. Here's... Like, I, I think I made a key. Yeah, this is impressive again. Impressive engineering. So now I need to make a second one of those. Now again, this has a bit of a burr. So we're going to try to clear that off. All right, now we're putting the second combination lock or whatever together here. Oh, I need my other 34s. All right. Try to get this over top. All oh, tight fit. I th it's rough, but it'll turn. Kind of feel like this should have had wax on it. So what I'm gonna do? Because that was such a tight. Let's take this apart, and we're gonna try to get these inside pieces a little, just a little more sandpapered down. I don't want it to be loose. Okay. So now we're going to go back to this, put these on. Then these. Still tight, but turnable. Yeah, that's better. Next. Off of N5, a great big thing with two holes in it. Number 30, spaceships and a mountain. Now, what are we doing with this? Because it says a caution. It says a strong caution. Right position key outside. Okay, this bit's fiddly. Unnecessarily fiddly. Okay, and then this one. Goes like that. And then it says to flip it, but like to hold all this together is a little pain in the ass. So we're gonna balance that there now. 
Okay, I think we've got it. Now we need 36 A and B. Okay, here's 36 A and B. We got some actual gears here. It does say to push out this bit in the middle. We've done that. Alright, most confusing part of the build so far. By far. Okay, things turning. That's nice. But like that. Hmm. Oh, I figured it out. This slides in. All right. Yeah. See, I was completely baffled. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it. It's that little notch. Well, huh. What you can see, what that notch does. Because that just fell right through. So these actually lock on. That's what I was missing. So this goes on and slides over. Then I have to put that little piece of wood back. And I was completely confused because I was like, how? See, now it's locked in. Boom. So this one also slides over. And I put this little piece of wood back in. And ta-da. Okay. And no longer confused. Look at puzzles we've got. Two 37s. Which I guess they showed me where 37s were already. Oh, oh, two more of those. Okay, two more of these. Look at how tiny those are. Evil. Okay. So far, so good. Then these. This sure doesn't want to stay on, but I'm sure something is coming soon. Lock those into place. Okay, 38 A and B. Okay, this sheet is done. 38 A goes up. Okay, it did say to wax this. I'm going to use one of the pieces of wax I brought. And we are going to wax the bottom. It's nicer. B. Let's make sure I got these right. The one with the G is on the bottom. This is going to sandwich. Somehow. But there's pokey bits. Pokey bits. Where those go for? And we'll get this on better. Oh, oh, okay. Heads up. Things got spun around. So, we need to fix that. Probably important. There we go. That slid in nice. And then we have this. That turns. And we have this that turns. But again, we don't have this piece. So we got to make sure those stay. We have wedged things together. We now have whatever the heck we're making here. Symbols on both sides. All right. Currently, this should still be like that. Oh, yeah. So hopefully, without destroying this, we need to sand this edge. And wax the inside of it. Which my wax, I shouldn't have kept round, it seems. Now, what I am doing with it is this is going here. Kind of show where I'm doing. And this is sliding over this. Right? So there, we have a hinge. Right? On this side. We're, we're almost looking box-like here. Now, unfortunately, remember that turning gear bit? Got turned. So there, now that actually fit on. Fairly nice. Okay. Hopefully we're putting the other edge on soon. Soon, please. <sighs> okay, I have 41 in my hand. 41 goes on this side. All right. Let's see. Okay, that wasn't bad. Once I, once I lined it up, there you go. 41. The other one goes on this side. 
for some people, this is probably way easier. <laughs> I'm making it look harder than it is. We now have... No, something... There we go. There we go. Now it's nice box-shaped. <gasps> Number two is done. Boom! Gone. This should lock everything together. So I'm trying to get this to slide on. So I can't possibly get that on right now. So I need to actually take these side pieces off and put that on first. It just stinks. Wish I had known that. Okay, I've got one to slide on. There we go. Okay, now let's try to get these side ones back on. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. There better be some locks, see, because Nothing, everything's just kind of held on by friction right now, which is scary. Oh, there, there, there we go. We we have a lid. So yes, I, I will point out right now that if you're paying any attention, you're going to know how to open this. Like, I, I can see what the proper answers are. So, so you'd have to really not look at what you're doing to be able to put this together without seeing a solution. Okay, now I'm assuming we got a bunch of locks. Oh, a top, a top. Here we go, a top. Or bottom, I guess as the case may be. Something to finally hold it all together. Okay, I'm concerned. Where, where's 46 go? Are we getting to that still? Oh, yeah, okay, we are. And then on number five, okay, all these locks. We're going to lock everything in place now. One on each side. Ah, uh, they do warn you to sand these, so I will. Oh, that ended up, look, that spins actually smoother than I was expecting. I was a little concerned. It's almost a box. Look at that. There's not much left. Almost a completed puzzle box. That was a tight fit. Last one. Okay. Look at that. That's awesome looking. Oh, that's the lid inside. I love it. Okay. Closing this up. Opens and closes smooth. Next, we have this. That appears. Slide in right here. And right here. But won't go all the way down. Because... Dear friend, you're on the finish line. Pay attention, lay with three parts. There are extras or spares with a special symbol. Two long keys and one small one help you and unlock the bottom panel, help you insert the long keys and close the box. Scan the QR code. Oh, I have to actually solve the puzzle now. Oh, geez. Okay. Huh. I can't lock it fully until I solve the puzzle. Wow, that's 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 kind of mean. We're gonna have a quick cleanup here before I start fiddling with this. Spare parts, sandpaper. Once you finish building this puzzle, you have to figure out part of it to actually fully close this. So what I need to do is push these down. And what I can tell is that's not gonna happen until this is out of the way. See this? This no longer slides, like when we built it, which means I need to get this out of the way. Note, this is just me trying to puzzle this out, which means I need to fix, figure out this slide puzzle, which uses this tool. So I'm gonna start by sliding that up.
Oh, it went. Okay. I had figured it out and I just didn't go far enough. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. He should be go all the way down now. So yes, coming out the bottom. Then we slide this down and it should lock those in place. Now the thing is, this isn't going to tell me how I actually solved it. Yes, this is not going to open now. We now have a locked box. Ta-da! I thought I had figured it out. And I'm like, why isn't it going? And I just hadn't pushed up on the, the bit there once I slid the blocks out of the way to give this room to go up. So what I honestly... So this is a lock part, too, that I didn't even get to see. So once you pull these out, you also have to turn the dials to the proper spot. So I haven't solved it, but I know mechanically how it all works. So we're going to mix all these up. There we go. Nice, solid box. All done. Completed. What I don't like is there's nowhere to really put this. Um, remember how at the end of putting this thing together and fiddling around with it and finally getting it to lock, there was a key that it, that I didn't know what to do with? Well, I figured it out. I know where the key goes. Key slides in right here. So if you look on that side, you can see that gap. So the key slides in right there. Boom. Snaps right in so it doesn't fall out. I did toss a little wax on that so that it comes out because I don't want people to think they have to force it. See, it comes out. You got to get a little tug, but not much of one. So key right there. All right, so there you have it. The orbital box times two put together in hour and a half, approximately. Um, it's built, it's done. So about hour and a half to put this together, you end up with a very chunky, solid box at the end. Very solid construction. Um, very fascinating sliding puzzle here. You got a thing where you can move a piece through. Um, I will admit now that I've, I've, I've solved it, I wouldn't know how to open this again. I know how to get these out, sorry, these out at the top. I know how to get that out and that out, which is one of the steps, but I have no idea how to figure out the combination for the combination lock here. So that's kind of cool. Um, I do have some good hints having built this, like I, I know certain things that slide and certain things that turn and that these are keys that I have to turn a certain way to be able to open the top. But I don't know the actual pattern right now, which way they have to go. So that's kind of neat. I still have no idea what this is for. I'm assuming to solve part of the puzzle. Um, neat. Uh, hour and a half's not bad. While doing it, one little tiny piece broke, but they give you. Let's, let's grab this again. This, extras. So I had to use one. One extra, that's it. They even give you a spare key piece in case you lose it. Um, some of the most, oh, and these too, nice, because I did, I almost tossed one of those out, so these, these flat ones. So you have it, the, the orbital box times two, where I've done one of the times two, I put it together. Next up is to figure out the actual puzzle, the, the bits I don't know to get this opened as a gift box. Now, compared to the other escape vault boxes I have, um, already solved, there's no prize in here. It's a little disappointing, at least the other ones had little wooden tchotchke in there when you opened it up, so you got something when you opened up the box at the end. It wasn't anything great. But that said, this is a much bigger box. You could put significant things in here. Um, our other ones, I like to hide Nintendo Switch games in them for my kids to find uh, if they ever solve the problems. Um, this, I could put in something much more significant, a gift card, uh, Hot Wheels cars. I don't even know. Like you, This is it's this is the full dimensions of the box. You can tell the, the inner part here gives you the dimensions of the box. This size, literally, um, I would say that deep. You can kind of see here. You can see where, ah, uh, terrible. Right there, there's how tall it is. So you've got all that depth and that size. So you can fit a significant gift in there, which is honestly what I think the coolest thing about these boxes are, is you give them to someone else with something cool inside and then they get two gifts in one. They've got to open this up and then they get whatever's inside. As for being a fun thing to build, that was fun. It was like playing, building a model kit. Instructions were surprisingly clear. No tools required that didn't come with it. Though I do recommend a hobby knife just in case something gets stuck. Um, when it says you need wax, it gives you the wax, which I'm not sure where I put the wax off to the side. You get this little, little thing of wax. Use that wax. You also get sandpaper. Little piece of sandpaper, use that. 
The rest of it just snapped together. No glue required. None at all. So very cool. Very impressive. Um, I'm fascinated by the engineering of these. So it was cool to see, get to see how some things work. Um, in particular, were these gears at the top. They were very neat. Very interesting. And thank you, anyone watching this after the fact on YouTube. Um, we may or may not cover this on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. To me, this was kind of the build and review all in one. Um, I am going to hand this over to Deanna and my kids and see if they can figure out how to open it and see how they do with it. And that's it for me for tonight. Build your own escape room box from Escape Welt. Again, uh, use code BELLHOP. And again, I am Mo Tuzano, Tabletop Bellhop. Good day and game on.